Mamie Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we turn now to the Korean Peninsula, where tensions are again escalating between the U.S. and North Korea. On Friday, North Korea tested an intercontinental ballistic missile that experts say may be capable of reaching the west coast of the United States. North Korea says the test was a warning to the United States to stop imposing sanctions against North Korea. In response to the test, the U.S. flew two B-1 bombers over the Korean Peninsula and again tested its Alaska-based THAAD missile defense system. The U.S. has deployed a similar THAAD missile defense system to South Korea, despite objections from local residents. Joining us now in former is former Green Party presidential candidate Dr. Jill Stein. She just returned from peace delegation to South Korea that was sponsored in part by the task force to stop THAAD in Korea and militarism in Asia. Dr. Jill Stein was the Green Party's presidential nominee in 2016 and 2012. Welcome back to Democracy Now! Great to see you. Talk about what you found in South Korea. It's a pretty amazing situation. Uh, South Korea just had what they call their candlelight uprising. They just impeached a very corrupt and conservative president. And now they have really turned their candlelight uprising, which continues to focus on the impacts of militarism, of nuclear weapons, uh, and the THAAD missile system. And they are calling for a peace treaty uh, with North Korea. With North Korea, you know, the Korean War essentially is not over. Uh, there's been an armistice, but the uh, peninsula has lived under threat of war. Uh, recently, North Korea has been firing off uh, uh, the second ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile, which is a very powerful and fast missile and is very frightening uh, to other countries around the world. And they've also now developed their nuclear weapons capability. And, um, you know, it's, it's been this uh, accelerating set of provocations now. North Korea has done this uh, in the setting where the U.S. has been doing nuclear bomb uh, mock runs, mock attacks with nuclear uh, weapons for uh, decades, actually. Um, and uh, we also have a policy of a first strike of a nuclear attack against North Korea. So, understandably, North Korea has felt like they have to develop uh, a nuclear weapon in order to, um, you know, have stand a chance. So, that's where we are. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous, because Seoul, a city of 25 million people, is in the crosshairs of this conflict, uh, and even a limited exchange of nuclear weapons uh, could result in nuclear winter, uh, which would, you know, in turn uh, is predicted to cause hundreds of millions of deaths around the world. So this is a conflict we all have a stake in, and it's not rocket science about how to fix it. Uh, the North Koreans, the Russians and the Chinese have all been very clear about what they want, which is essentially a freeze on the um, uh, on the war games, this, this threatened nuclear attack from the U.S. Well, in exchange for a freeze on their nuclear and their missile program. Well, you mentioned the changing political situation in South Korea, which gets very little attention here in the United States. Uh, the, is it your sense that there's a possibility for the South Korean government to take independent action in terms of moving forward on uh, diffusing the, the tensions uh, with the North? And, and if so, is the Trump administration's, a lot of the bellicose nature of its pronouncements now really uh, predicated to trying to stop <laughs> any kind of reconciliation between the, the South and the North? Yeah, I mean, you know, the Trump administration seems to be doing what it knows how to do, which is to basically sell weapons and drum up conflicts in order to do that. Um, you know, they seem pretty clueless about how to proceed. And with the chaos going on in the White House, you know, it's questionable what they can do. But there are saner voices that are beginning to be heard right now. The New York Times had an editorial this morning actually calling for negotiations. James Clapper himself uh, has really come out quite strongly in favor of what they call a freeze for a freeze, freeze the uh, war games and uh, in exchange for uh, North Korea freezing its weapons program. Um, and, and there are others. We've done this before. Uh, negotiations have actually worked in the past, during the mid-90s. Uh, we were able to freeze, for a period of about eight years, the weapons development program by sitting down and talking with North Korea. And then George Bush came in with his uh, uh, evil 
uh, you know, his axis of evil, and actually at that point instituted a first strike nuclear policy against North Korea. So, you know, and destroyed the uh, the trust and the negotiations. But we need to go back to that. Uh, it's like the Cold War, you know, all over again. We need to relearn those lessons. Right now, the instincts are to basically uh, fire up the missiles and bring in more of them. It's absolutely a disaster. I should mention the THAAD uh, um, missile defense system, because this is very provocative to China. You know, it's like we're taking the regime change paradigm from from the Middle East, and we're trying to apply it here in on the Korean Peninsula, you know. And if you think it was a disaster in the Middle East, now add nuclear weapons and uh, China and Russia, you know, this isn't going to work. Which is why I mentioned the nuclear winter thing, because we're heading towards a mushroom cloud right now. You know, this is not like your regime change in the Middle East, which has been. Catastrophic enough. This is really on on uh, on a nuclear dimension now, so it just cannot go forward. Even, and saner voices. Even need the to new prevail. South Korean president Moon Jae-in is against the THAAD missile system. Didn't even know that some new equipment was just brought in to his own country when it came to THAAD, and That's called right. for immediate yeah. negotiations with North Korea. What happened? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a good question, and the people of uh, South Korea are really disturbed about this, and uh, are you know. There are really strong demonstrations going on against him now, and it's felt like he's really betrayed the people because he was very clear as a candidate that he supported. But he called for this as president. That's right. Well, you know, initially as president, he he did um, oppose that, and then he's done a real turnaround ever since his uh, summit with uh, uh, with Donald Trump. <laughs> he's really backed off. So, you know, I, I think. Uh, What's exciting now is that there is sort of an international um, coalition that's developing among the peace and democracy groups between South Korea and the U.S., and we're really both trying to work at both ends of the problem, and to get the U.S. to back off, and likewise to get uh, South Korea to stand up for sovereignty. It has been essentially an occupied peninsula. Occupied, it's been a battleground, actually, of the great powers for the last century, initially occupied by Japan, then, you know, by Japan throughout the Second World War, and then immediately occupied by the Soviet Union. And in the U.S., and, and, and your sense they of pay uh, the price. your sense when you were there in South Korea of how people regard the role of China, because the Trump administration never stops saying China's got to step forward, China's got to step forward, and now, of course, is saying China has failed to step forward. Uh, the, the, the role of China in this, because it, China continues to reject the U.S. Uh, approach to dealing with North Korea. That's right. I mean, China objects to the effort to um, isolate and punish North Korea. They don't want to see North Korea destroyed. They're not crazy about uh, uh, Kim Jong Un either. Uh, it appears, but they don't want a failed state on their border. They also don't want the U.S. or a U.S. client state on their border either. So they're they're very committed to preserving North Korea, and they're going to do that. The people of South Korea really want to get rid of the THAAD uh, anti-missile system, because they see it as very provocative to China. They want to be left alone to deal with their relations in North Korea. And they have a very concrete sense of how they can begin a process. Uh, you know, they had an economic development um, a joint program with the North Koreans. They want to be able to go back to that. They want to be able to take a step-by-step -step approach, starting with, um, you know, the negotiations for a peace treaty.